So for today, we're going to be reviewing the duality dungeon. I finally completed the solo flawless for it. It was pretty rough, but I am happy to say that I did actually complete it on my first try, which is pretty cool. I know you guys aren't going to believe me, but I'm pretty happy about it. So if you guys like the video, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think about the dungeon itself. I will be doing a tier list of the dungeons. Uh, if you guys are interested, I'll have it in the description below once I complete that video, because this one's most likely going to go first. But yeah, without further ado, let's just get into it. So I will be basically reviewing the encounters themselves. The jumping mechanics and whatnot are not that big in, in my opinion. I will be adding the, the statue thing just because why not? But other than that, there's really just three encounters in this whole dungeon. Not saying that's bad or good or anything. I'm just saying that's how many there are. So uh, to start off, I think the dungeon like thematically is super cool i think it's super super cool i love that they're bringing back the mind thing from season of the uh season of the risen i think it was uh, i think it's super cool because we're going into callus's mind essentially which is really really cool again i just think this whole dungeon aesthetically is really fucking cool um my main gripe with it is the armor just doesn't th doesn't like thematically feel like it's part of this dungeon i do understand that in the lore the armor that we're getting is actually the guardians that uh went before us or something like that i understand that i'm not saying that's cool or bad or anything it's just that i would have loved to see galron inspired armor drop or something along those lines because that would have been cool again i'm not like trying to shit on the people who designed the armor i think the armor the hockey armor looks pretty cool it's just that again i would have preferred if we got armor that was like thematic to that to this dungeon or even like give us like keitel themed armor because she is the last boss or again galron themed armor or just do a combination of like all of it i don't know either way uh it's not the end of the world i think i still think that armor is really cool and i will do a review on it when i get all the all of the armor uh probably individually because my hunter just needs one more piece and my hunt titan still needs pretty much everything so yeah first encounter it's pretty it's pretty rough i'm not gonna lie specifically for from a solo flawless standpoint or just solo in general it's pretty rough just because of the the uh, enemy density is really really bi big uh i'm not bad by any means i think it's super cool i love it when there's more enemies but that just means a lot more juggling in your part um that being said, with Solar 3.0 and the new Resilience uh, buffs, it's not as hard as it could be because with Resilience all the way high, it shit really does not hit hard. And if you have Solar 3.0 specifically with the seasonal mod, the one where when you use your class ability, you get healing, you're almost never dying. Specifically on Titan, they like almost never die. Uh, I, I will say they really they really gave these enemies a lot of thought and what I mean what I mean by that is the placement in certain enemies they really thought out like we're gonna we're gonna annoy players specifically the the fire boys that guard the bells I think that it's terrible that they put those there because a if you're not careful the backpack will kill you because if you shoot you, it's the crit so if you shoot it it'll explode and you'll be dead um if you don't shoot the the backpack and kill the guy outright the backpack actually drops and will murder someone if they're not careful you guys will see in my my solo flawless run i don't shoot them because i just wasn't putting too much thought into it but when i start when in the last fight i actually start shooting them because one of my clanmates actually got killed by it and in the boss room because Keitel stomp like literally she stomped so hard that the backpack went flying towards him so just be aware that the backpack can still kill you if if the enemy's dead uh, other than that i think it's super cool the mechanic of basically going in and out of the nightmare room, uh, room or whatever i think that's super cool very reminiscent of the i guess time travel uh that's, yeah, the time travel level in in uh, Titanfall 2 literally reminded me of that, and I thought it was super cool. Uh, but but other than that, Galron's not that crazy. It's really weird using a sword again, but at the same time, it's a welcome change because uh, 
I wasn't really sure what to use and the sword was just like it's gonna be the best choice lament is just gonna be the best choice because as a hunter uh I'm really just out in the open and obviously I can I can be uh using restoration stuff which I was but it doesn't beat having a bubble or having well so it, it is nice that lament is healing you but on the off chance that you don't have lament or you're just using a regular sword just dodge before you start attacking him and you and make sure you have the seasonal mod on and you'll be good to go uh if you guys want to see an actual guide like a solo flawless guide let me know because i was gonna do that but at the same time it's already super late and people have been farming the shit out of it so i don't think i need to make a guide video but again if you guys want i will do it so the next encounter would be basically the statue portion. Again, I'm skipping all of the, the jumping puzzles and whatnot because it's already been like almost a week since this has been out. Again, if you want an actual guide, just let me know in the comments below. I would be more than happy to make one for y'all. But again, this is just gonna be reviewing the actual dungeon itself. Uh, but that being said, I think that the jumping puzzles are super cool. Uh, not super imaginative, but I mean, at the same time, it's fine, I guess. The next one is the statue one and again it's not that crazy at the end of the day it's just make sure the statues are facing towards this the, the, the podium and that's really it there is a hidden chest there in that room so that's cool other than that that's pretty much it the second encounter is the vault this one i think would is the hardest encounter from the whole dungeon personally just because of the time crunch uh in my solo flawless uh, i actually almost died Specifically, I had zero, like zero seconds left. I was about to die. And I, I just think this, this portion of the dungeon is the worst of it. It's actually stressful. And this is actually where I started shooting the backpacks because they started coming off. You're going to want to shoot the backpacks because they will kill you if you're not careful. Uh, and if you guys are paint playing paying close attention you guys will notice that i'm actually doing solar i actually ended up doing the whole thing on solar which is a really big accomplishment on my part i know that with the resilience buff and solar just being really good for survivability i'm still kind of proud of myself because uh as someone who just crutches on hunter, hunter invisibility for pretty much everything in the game i felt really proud of myself for being able to do this uh, not saying it's easy or hard, it's just, again, there's certain things you have to be aware of and certain things that you kind of have to just do. Like, for example, you just have to know when to take cover and when not to take cover. Uh, it's not that hard for, for, for a hunter because it's kind of like the same thing with you have to know when to, when to turn invisible and when not to kind of the same thing. But I don't know. It's just weird getting shot in the face and being like, I can't go invisible. Like I have to, I have to shoot. I have to like, I have to perform. And yeah, it was really funny. That aside, this actual encounter is again, very time sensitive. Uh, I was taking my sweet time in the actual, like not the nightmare room, the regular room, uh, the reality, I guess I'll call it. I was taking my, my sweet time in reality because again, I was trying to like mentally prepare myself like, okay, where is it? It's here. Okay, cool. I even made a really bad map for myself on day one when it came out because I just could not, my brain could just not register where the, where the places were. And I just could not remember. So I actually needed like something in my face to tell me where things were at, which tremendously helped. I actually think after I wrote that map, I was done with the, with the encounter. Uh, I think it's it's weird because i think this encounter is really long but there's no way to shorten it in my opinion because you already just need to slam twice uh when you're doing it solo it is a little bit harder but at the same time it's not really all you have to make sure is okay i'm going here cool i go over there the the worst of it is when you go into the nightmare realm i think that's when it really hits you how hard it is because Let's say you go to dogs or whichever one is on the screen right now. Not only do I have to go there, I have to make sure I kill the the bomb boys. I forget the, the incinerators. I have to kill the incinerators before or after I get the, the buff because I have to go through the door, the bell. That's I think that's the worst part of it. Like if you can do it before or after, it doesn't really matter in, in like to be fair. 
uh, I was doing it before or after whatever, wherever I was, I was like, okay, I'm going to go get the buff first or whatever. Uh, basic prioritizing that way. I think the worst of it was the fact that you really had to make sure that your ad control was on point specifically for when you were in the nightmare realm, mostly because once you go in there, you're committing, you're either going to get the buff or you're going to kill the incinerator so you can go back outside, which don't be afraid to do that. I ended up doing that, I think once or twice because I fucked up and thought the incinerators were spawning somewhere else when they weren't. And at that point I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go back outside because I don't want to, I don't want to die. So, which is what I did. I, I was way more safe than I should have been. But at the end of the day, I wanted to make sure that I completed this and not die from something dumb. The other thing that really, really benefited me was actually putting on stompies, which is really weird. I ended up putting stompies because I just needed that extra speed because again, you have to be fast. And unfortunately, uh, the build that I was going for, I had wither, wither horde an SMG and an LMG. I still couldn't be do it fast enough that I felt comfortable not having stompies on. Overall, I think the second encounter, uh, weirdly enough, might be my favorite one just because of how accomplished you feel. Like you have to hit everything. You have to do all of it. Like it's such a different feeling. And this one is definitely really, really cool. I, I don't know. It just hit different, I guess. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I think what I didn't uh, mention is the fact that once you once you get the two buffs and plant down the both of them uh that's damage phase and whoever designed the bosses for this encounter i thank you for making the damage phase like forever until the boss dies i thank you for that because i can promise you if it was timed this would easily have been the worst encounter in any in any destiny 2 content easily because if the bosses were timed it doesn't matter how long the timer they would have given none of no timer would have felt good so the fact that they just made it whenever you can kill the boss is good i i appreciate that because it i would take easily 20 20 minutes 10 minutes actually the longest i think was 10 minutes just me like making sure i was killing ads and not getting overwhelmed because you definitely don't want to get overwhelmed um after after you kill the first one two more will pop up and then well not in, at the same time you have to do the whole sequence again kill the the next boss do the whole sequence and then do the next boss again overall i really love this one uh looking back at it it's probably the one where i had the most fun because of just the amount of like just hit, like skill that you had to really do i guess is what my, my head goes to uh Next portion would probably be the jumping puzzle, which again, nothing too crazy. It's a jumping puzzle. I don't particularly care about it. I will say there are two moments in this dungeon that you have to slide down a corridor. Those two can instantly kill you if you're not careful. If you're a, if you're a regular Destiny 2 player, you already know what I'm talking about. You'll get physics to death or physics to death. And it's not a good feeling. It's not a good feeling at all. I'm paranoid, so I ended up having my sword, the Lament, out with me when I went down and then immediately swiped when I was uh, close to the floor. And for the last one, I had just supered because, again, I'd rather be safe than be pissed because I died from a stupid thing. Uh, the actual last encounter would be Keitel herself. She, let me tell you guys, she was actually really rough my first time. My first time when I first did her, she she legitimately stressed me out, um, almost broke me as a person because the sheer amount of bugs that she had during like day one was stupid. I died from architects more than I have ever died in my life, probably. And I'm talking like, oh, the bell exploding on me. Actually, I have the recording of, of when the bell exploded on me. I'll have it right now. Oh my god, bro! What the fuck? So as you can see, I was really mad because that was the farthest, farthest I've, I've ever gone. And at that point, I felt really comfortable in in the actual ad room. Uh, to the point where I just, 
I don't I was never afraid even even in my solo flawless I was really never afraid that I was gonna die because with solar 3.0 and the resilience buff it, just nothing would outright kill me as fast as my healing could heal me so if you are trying to do this solo flawless I recommend doing it on on solar 3.0 and uh, high resilience hunters I know this is gonna be a big ask considering most of your armor sets mostly will not have high resilience pieces I understand this pain because <laughs> I am the same way but you're gonna want to prioritize high mobility and high resilience because you can actually um, you can actually like just activate your recovery whenever you want with your dodge with the specific build but yeah, it's, it was so, I don't want to say brain dead because it's not brain dead, but it's just the level of comfortable comfortability that I had during the last encounter was scary. I've never felt that comfortable in a last encounter in a dungeon when I'm solo flawlessing. That's what really like kind of sort of scared me, I guess you would say. Um, for, so let's talk about damage. Uh, <clears throat> For damage, I ended up using Lament again with the the P or the Crucible Fusion Rifle and uh, what's it called? The Callus Mini Tool. I ended up using those two specifically because Callus Mini Tool has my uh, the one that I have has Incinerate or uh, whatever it's called Incandescent, I think it's called, which helps with my build. And then the the Crucible Fusion Rifle. Uh, the the stasis one I was using that one specifically because it had Vorpal weapon on it and I really needed something to kill the incinerators and Fusion rifle is the best choice because you can just outright Incinerate them, but I hate that I made that but yeah, you can basically make them die like that and <clears throat> and when I was feeling a little too overwhelmed and wanted to be a little bit in the back with cover, I would actually switch out to a scout rifle, uh, specifically the one from uh, from Deepstone Crypt, because again, I was I was being a little too nervous and I was like, you know, I, it looks too crazy over there. Let me just uh, kill a few of them before I go over there. So when it comes to damage phase, the damage phase is pretty rough. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, uh, mostly because. Keitel's a bitch, uh, like a proper bitch. If you're not careful, she'll, she'll outright beeline herself to the actual bell, which means you lose out on a damage phase. That happened twice to me while my solo flawless was happening. So that was kind of not demoralizing because I, ex I was expecting it, but more just frustrating uh, because the other reason why I would prefer using a sword in this encounter is because you can actually make her stomp and if you have a sword with you you can actually just block the damage that she'll do so that's another reason why i was using sword it's not the best dps i still think the best dps would probably be the new linear fusion which i did get a god roll at that um but overall this dungeon was super fun guys i highly recommend it I will be doing a tier list of the dungeons and maybe the exotic missions as well, just because they're basically dungeons as well. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Did you guys like the dungeon duality? Let me know in the comments below. If you guys want to follow me on my social media, I'll links in the description below. I thank you all for coming up to this point and I'll see you all later.